we all know Burkitt lymphoma is one of the worst tumors in the human body. It's very, it's the fastest growing human tumor. Burkitt lymphoma is the fastest growing human tumor. The problem is really bad. But if such a tumor expresses CD10, if the tumor is going to have, the patient is going to have a better prognosis. Good, Vinay. <clears throat> okay. So that's about CD10. And then monocyte markers, I just want you all to remember this 11C, 13, 33, 40, 50 and all like for myeloid lineage. So 13 and 33 as monocytic markers, primary monocytic markers. Moving on to uh, myeloid cell markers. What are the myeloid cell markers? 14 and 15. So 13, 33 monocytic markers. Myeloid 14 and 15. And natural killer cell markers. CD16 and CD56. What is CD16? It is, there is FC receptor for IgG. So, na bottom line is natural killer cells expresses receptors for antibodies. This will mediate what? What is the purpose? So, this is the basis for something called ADCC, which, is, which has become popular only in the past 10 years. ADCC meaning antibody dependent cytotoxicity. So, there are a lot of ways of causing cell death by antibodies. One mechanism of cell death caused by antibodies is ADCC in the sense. Antibodies will engage natural killer cells, result in their destruction. Okay. <coughs> okay. Then primary stem cell marker we all know CD34. Where else will we come across CD34 master? Any anywhere else? Any other cell that express CD34 positivity? Yeah. Online kits? Any other cell? <coughs> CD34, CD31. All these are associated with Vascular cell. Endothelial cells will express CD34, CD31, and von Willebrand factor. Of course, Ulex Europius. We always thought Ulex Europius is a point for PGs. This is uh, MDPGs. But this had appeared in the uh, year ago question paper, Ulex Europius. So the vascular markers are CD31, CD34, von Willebrand factor, and Ulex Europius. Okay. So the activation marker is CD30. And all because it is CD45. A lot more CD markers to be marked up. We will discuss about it later. So which is not expressed in T lymphocytes? CD10 good because CD10 is a B cell marker. Good. Anything else? T cells in a sense mature T cells. Will it express CD34? No. CD34 is a mature marker. Stem cell marker. So it won't be expressed. So answers are CD34 and CD10. Good. <coughs> so all <coughs> all are B cell markers except 315 is it a B cell marker? No. Good. See 19, 21, 23, CD4, CD4 is a B cell marker? It's a marker present in all lineages, all leukocytes. It's a B cell will also express uh, CD4. So though it's not a lineage specific marker, it will be expressed. The answer is CD15. Which of the following is a pan T lymphocyte marker? This will be CD3. So these are CD markers like this. The CLL B lymphocyte express such CD markers on the surface. That's how we pick up. So what is the method of identifying the CD markers? How do which investigation uh, identify CD markers? We can do immunophenotyping. Like immunohistochemistry, the antibodies can pick up. I now commonly used method is flow cytometry. Again, the, the principle is the same, you know, immunophenotyping. The flow cytometry is the is technique we use. Interleukin produced by macrophages stimulating lymphocytes. Now, so far we discussed this, what is signal 3 for immune response? The secretion of uh, cytokines by the antipresentant cell activating the T lymphocytes, right? So, which cytokines are produced by macrophages for activation of T lymphocytes? That's the first cytokine produced. So it should be IL-1. Okay. It's IL-1. I just stick to this. Okay. So, IL-1 is gaining popularity because now, nowadays, you know, there is a new set of uh, disease, uh, new set, class of disease has come. Inflammosome associated diseases. This is these disease disorders 
are due to activation of inflammasome. When inflammasome get activated, IL-1 gets released. There is continuous inflammation. So all these disorders, you know, like atherosclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, all these family mediterranean fever, all these come under now inflammasome associated tumors. So all these are needed by IL-1. <coughs> Very good, Vinay. Okay. So IL-2 is secreted by. So now we know IL-1 is secreted by macrophages. IL-2 is secreted by first cytokine by the macrophage. Macrophage activates T lymphocytes. Then the next sec second cytokine is secreted by the helper T cells. So where did we come across IL-2? <coughs> we did discuss this in the morning. IL-2, IL-12, interferon gamma are subsets of so are cytokines of TH1 response. So this IL-2 will be secreted by, that's what granulum I said, like you can see IL-12 by APC, IL-1 also by APC in this TH1 response, it is IL-12 and interferon gamma and IL-2. You can see IL-2 secreted by helper T cell with subset TH1 subset <clears throat> and you may find it a bit difficult with this cytokines but at least the major important ones you remember so TH1 by macrophages TH uh, sorry IL1 by macrophages IL2 by TH1 subset <clears throat> other cytokines also we discuss IL12, IL4, IL5 you all know now so IL2 secreted by CD4 lymphocyte nothing to do with immunity because the picture is not so clear yeah it's better for your online picture so what is this picture it's about the gums what is the appearance of the gums we started with strawberry tongue so this is strawberry gums strawberry gums are seen in g4g granulomatosis veganus granulomatosis it's strawberry gums <coughs> one of the often asked <coughs> MCQ, picture based MCQ. It was in last year May question. Okay, so uh, next question is a 3 year old Sneha developed itching, breathlessness, and collapsed immediately after her mother fed her fish. Last, last time when she was fed the same food, she, uh, for the first time she tolerated well. Okay. Uh, which among the following statements is true regarding this? What do you think the patient has got? Which hypersensitive reaction? She collapsed literally. Immediately developed. Type 1. So if it's type 1, she tolerated it well last time. Why she has, why she has become immediately hypersensitive to it? <coughs> we'll come back to these questions. Okay. So the hypersense reaction we you know we discuss in the morning itself we discuss type 1 to 4, 1 and 4 cell mediated, 2 and 3 antibody mediated. So we'll discuss type 1 hypersensitive reaction. The um, basic explanation about this type 1 hypersensitive reaction is good, that's very good, sensitized last time. This um, type 1 hypersensitive reaction happens very rapidly, it's rapidly developing immunological reaction. In sensitized persons, in a sense, who has got exposure in the first time, didn't react that time, developed these uh, antibodies and they got sens sensitized in the sense, the antibodies are coating the mast cells. That much have happened in the first exposure. So, absolutely no clinical symptoms. So, the subsequent exposure, the patient mounted immediate response. And in whom it happens? Already uh, sensitized, but not for everyone. You might have got sensitized one, I might have got sensitized one, not sensitized. you might have got exposed once, I might have got exposed once. In, in whom it happens actually? In genetically predisposed individuals, and not for everyone. So in atopic individuals, this happens. Rapidly developing immunological reaction due to combination of an antigen. What, what should be the quality of the antigen? Not every antigen will evoke the same response. What should be the quality of the antigen? Polyvalent antigens. For each and every point, there is some specificity, specifications. So, polyvalent antigens. Okay. Bound to the mast cells and genetically predisposed individuals sensitized to antigen mediated by IgE, you know, like the predominant antibody. You know, the antibodies are IgE. The predominant cells are 
eosinophils and mast cells. Mast cells, immediate phase, eosinophils in the delayed phase.